Hello, it's 9 p.m. in our studios, and this is UTTV News with me, Isaac Gulli. In the headlines this evening, Washington West African Center's Executive Director, Pa Usman Juf, wins the Washington's Evans School of Public Policy and Governance with Community Catalyst 2023 Award. 70 prison inmates have graduated with various skills, courtesy of Inside Training Center. Police on Monday dismantle Western Union and shops erected against traffic laws governing road safety and public order at Jimpex and Westfield as security operations on illegal encroachment continues. United Democratic Party Students Wing elects new executive to run their affairs until 2027. At least one person has died and four others are missing after two cargo ships coalated of Germany's North Sea coast. This and many other stories coming ahead in the next couple of minutes. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, you've been reminded that you are watching GTTV News with me, Isa Tukuli. The executive director of Washington West African Center, Pa Usman Juf, was on the 18th of October 2023 awarded the Community Catalyst Award 2023 by the University of Washington Evans School of Public Policy and Governance, held at the City Hall in downtown Seattle. For his outstanding work, he continues to render to the community of Washington. Our model I mean, Joe has in this report. The colorful award ceremony was well attended by several dignitaries in the public sector of Washington State as Pastor Usman Juf and two other persons received their awards for their role in public leadership. Among the top dignitaries was the former governor of Washington State, 98-year-old Dan Evans, who this Evans School is named after. The Lieutenant Governor of Washington State, Danny Heck, Speaker of the House, Larry Jenkins, and other lawmakers, and several other dignitaries in the public sector of Washington State. Pa Usman Juf saw up in a grand style as he was accompanied on stage to receive his award by the internationally renowned musician and Kora Maestro Pablo Wajabate from Birkama. Speaking about the award ceremony, CEO of Wawak, Pa Usman Juf, expressed happiness and said he and his staff take pride in providing culturally relevant wrap around services to provide different demographics of the West African community in Washington State with confidentiality, dignity, and respect. He described the award as a great joy and added that he and his staff do a lot of back and work that leads to the different programs and services they provide to the community. Mr. Ju thanked his board of directors under the leadership of Ms. Gloria and the staff of community members whom he described as very passionate to serve the community with dignity, respect and integrity. Meanwhile, he continued to thank all the partners, especially the Community Foundation of Snohomish County, Inate Foundation, formerly Group Health Foundation, Violent Health Commission, Schools Out Washington, Washington State Department of Commerce, Snohomish County, the University of Washington, Seattle, and Bethel campuses, and other for their usual support and cooperation. Reporting for GTTV News, I am Maud Lamin Job. At least 70 prison inmates, including three prison officers from Mile 2 Prison and Gingembury, have graduated in electrical and solar installation, satellite installation, tailoring, plastering, and information technology skills, courtesy of Inside Training Center. That training is part of efforts to metamorphosing the country's prison system into a correction center. Kadimbai reports. The graduation has been welcomed as very important that is expected to transform prison inmates into better people in the society after serving their jail time in crimes they are imprisoned for. Speaking at the event, Ismaila Sise, principal of Inside Training Center, urged the graduating inmates to make best use of their land skills for their betterment and for the development of the country. While congratulating the graduates for successfully completing their training and employ them to make the best use of the skill they learn so as to be proud citizens of the country. Most of the ex-convicts are either employed or self-employed. Three of the former inmates are employed at inside, one at managerial level and the other two at supervisory level. 
I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the graduates for successfully completing their training and implore on them to make best use of these skills. Learn so as to be proud citizens of this country. He highlighted that his school, in collaboration with the Ministry of Interior and prison authorities, started offering SOIC training in 2012 to provide skill and knowledge to inmates before the end of their jail term. The purpose of our collaboration is to provide skills and knowledge to inmates before the end of their, their jail term so that they will walk out of the jail with some degree of skills and knowledge. He added that the Inside Training Center has so far trained inmates from 2012 to 2023 in different skills of studies, adding that the most of the ex-convicted are either employed or self-employed. Three of the former inmates are employed at Inside, one at managerial level, and the other two at supervisory level. Reporting for GTTV News, Kadimbay. Police led special security operation on illegal encroachment has entered into its fourth day as the force continues to get thumb up by the Gambian public. The operation is geared towards demolition of permanent and temporary structures and installations that are in line with the laws governing road safety and public order. Modula Minjob is with the theme and he files in this report.
The United Democratic Party's Students' Wing, on Saturday, 21st of October, 2023, elected a new executive who will run the affairs of the wing at an executive congress held at Latin Kuna. Kadim Bai reports. Members of the United Democratic Party Students' Wing during the weekend elected their new executive who are tasked to run the affairs of the group until 2027 as enshrined in the wing's constitution. The elected executive members are Ismaila Fadera as president, Sena Busise, vice president, Lamin Mane, secretary general, and Alaji B. Drame as assistant secretary general. Badusani has been elected as the public relations officer, Sirawali as the social secretary, and Tijan Dabo as her assistant, while Aisha Tutura is elected as the internal audit and Awabayo as the treasurer of the association. They are all pursuing their degrees at the University of the Gambia. The newly elected president of the students' wing, Ismaila Fadera, President Tank, the students' members for entrusting him to serve them at the highest portfolio of the group and promised that he will do his utmost best in serving them and the party. Opportunity to thank um, the members of the um, UDP student wing um, and by extension the um, outgoing executives, that is Abu Bakar Fulus Drame, the president, and then you have Modlamin Sao or Modlamin ML Sao as their outgoing secretary. And I also want to thank the members of the national executive um, who are here with us. That is my very own brother, Aji Suane, and then my sister, Binta Senghor. Um, without them, this um, Congress wouldn't have been made possible. I also want to thank um, my, my, my brothers, um, Omar and Kemu Singate. Um, though um, I am fortunate to be elected as the president, as well as Senabu Sise as the vice president. But one thing is very important in the United Democratic Party is the unity that we all cherish. He expressed optimism that the United Democratic Party will win the forthcoming presidential election in 2026, assuring that they will ensure all avenues are explored to make sure the party wins. I'm very optimistic. Optimistic in the fact that if you look at the country, um, the actions are there to speak for us. You understand? If you look at the, um, our mayors and our, chair, uh, our chairmen, or let's say our, our chairman across the um, country, they are definitely delivering. So let the Gambian people entrust us um, by voting for us in 2026. A lot of things that they are complaining, inflation is high, high crime rates, uh, coming down to education, definitely would be something that the United Democratic Party is going to address. Remember, we gave the Gambians the five-point policies. Uh, we campaign on that. We roam the entire country with that principles. So it's just a matter of picking it from where we left it. And I am very optimistic that come 2026, it's going to be a revolution. And it is a yellow revolution. As a revolution. That is, we have to change the government, whatever it takes. Haji Swane, the National Youth President of the United Democratic Party, called on the newly elected executive members to be law-abiding citizens and let them not dwell into politics of insults. Instead, let them bring ideas and policies that would develop the country. Advising all of us that we have to subscribe to the rule of law, not the rule of war. Abide by the laws and do what is diligent as far as the UDP and its membership are concerned. That politics of insult should not be expected from any of the uh, or any member or any citizen of the Gambia today. What we should push for today is politics of ideas, programs, and policies. Reporting for GTTV News, I am Mulamin. <laughs>Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, you've been reminded that you're still watching JTTV News. Now let's look at the international news. Efforts are continuing as one person has died and four others are missing after two cargo ships collided off German's North Sea coast on Tuesday. Two of the seven crew members on board, the British flagged Variety 
which sank after accident we are rescued. Lamin MC says in this report. German Coast Guard said divers were searching the shipwreck on the sea floor for signs of life. The Verity reportedly collided with the Bahamian Pleaser at around 5 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday morning. The Verity was on its way to the UK carrying steel from the northern German city of Bremen to Imimham in Lincolnshire when it collided with the Polisher, which had departed from Hamburg on a journey to La Corona in Spain. None of the 22 crew on the Polisher were injured. The incident happened off the coast of Heligoland, a German archipelago which is part of the state of Schleswig Holstein. Two sea rescue cruisers from the German Maritime Search and Rescue Service, a German Navy helicopter and a water police boat were used in the search efforts. The rescue service said the loner and a P&O cruise ship that was in the area also contributed to the search. Passengers were informed at around 5.30 that the ship was helping in search efforts. The company confirmed to ITV that the loner had fulfilled its obligations under international and moral law. The loner, which left Southampton on Saturday, born for stops in Hamburg, Rotterdam and Bruges, has since been released to continue its journey. In a statement posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, German Transport Minister Walker Wissen tank rescue crew and said every effort was being made to rescue the missing people. The cause of the collision is still unclear. Reporting for GDTV News, I am Lam Lam CC. Well, that ends this news bulletin, but before we take leave of you, here are the top stories. Washington West African Center's Executive Director, Pa Usman Juf, wins the Washington's Evans School of Public Policy and Governance with Community Catalyst 2023 Award. 70 prison inmates have graduated with various skills courtesy of Inside Training Center. Police on Monday dismantle Western Union and shops erected against traffic laws governing road safety and public order at Jimpex and Westfield as security operations on illegal encroachment continues. United Democratic Party Students Wing elects new executive to run their affairs until 2027. At least one person has died and four others are missing after two cargo ships coalated off Germany's North Sea coast. Well, that's the end of tonight's bulletin. Do stay tuned for our upcoming interesting programs. Until then, do have a pleasant evening. It's a bye from me and the entire production team.